Everything's destroying our dopamine and we all know it. Whether it's TikTok, fast food, our phones selling our data, honestly, I can't keep track. Just keeping track ruins my dopamine. Then I had an idea. What would happen if I spent my entire day incorporating the micro habits I've developed over the last few years that refuel my dopamine into my daily routine from morning, gym, work, and night routine? How would that make me feel? I don't know, let's try it. My morning routine. Step number one, avoid social media. First, toilet, awkward, then skincare, which luckily skincare keeps my hands busy from scrolling social media. I always feel the longer I delay getting on social media in the morning, the better it is for my dopamine. Also, I put my phone on focus mode that blocks all the high dopamine apps. But confession, there's one exception, Twitter. Because I have this private Twitter that only follows like 10 boring accounts like weather and my boyfriend's scores. So no news, nothing triggering. And for some reason, I find that app very boring. So I'm not tempted to go on the explore page on like the four years page on TikTok and Instagram. And yeah, I'm faking this shot because I'm not going to put me going to the bathroom on the internet. Number two, morning coffee. No, I don't wait 90 minutes. Come on. But here's why. It doesn't give me that 2 p.m. crash. But if it does for you, wait 90 minutes. But Huberman has recently corrected saying, if you do work out right away, you're probably all fine. And listen to your body. And guess what? I love it. It's my favorite part of the morning. Ingesting caffeine can actually help with your dopamine. In the forms of coffee or tea, whatever you prefer, there is a mild increase in dopamine, but also increases the availability of dopamine receptors. So your body is more sensitive to circulating dopamine. Don't do this close to sleep though. We'll talk about my caffeine later on. Number three, actually started the night before sleep. Because if one thing's for sure, my dopamine is all over the place if I've had a crappy sleep. Here is what I did the night before to ensure I wake up feeling rested. One, avoid caffeine after 5 p.m. Two, I've recently started turning my screen red. I've YouTube short about this, so that way I'm not staring at blue light at night. Three, I have a shower before bed. Four, confession, I actually hate sleeping. The part that's hardest for me to get good sleep is just leaving the couch. It's comfy, it's cozy, I love the couch and watching and binge watching TV. It's how do I get myself to actually wanna leave the couch and go into my bed? And I realized the only way I was able to do that was making my bed so comfy and amazing, I was actually craving it. The three steps I did to do that is number one, set a vibe, turn off the harsh lights, just some nice vibey lights, two, I have my eight sleep, which warms it up, so I know my bed's gonna be cozy, and three, comfy sheets. I've slept on these same sheets for four years from Brooklyn Inn, and I absolutely love them. They're the comfiest, and the best part is they get better over time. You've seen them forever because I'm obsessed. So the feeling of the comfy sheets and the warm bed and the nice vibe makes me like, ooh, going into bed would be nice. Brooklinen is a luxury sheet company creating high quality home goods to elevate your home. I've always gotten the Lux satin and I think it's beautiful. For the winter months, I use graphite because it's just a vibe and making it cozy and kind of dark and moody. But come springtime, which I'm gonna lie to myself is the start of March, I do swap out for white. If you also want some seasonal vibes, they have ones like Rolling Dot and Jade, Tropical Orchid. I love Brooklinen because first, look how good the sheets look. Like I love the look of my bedroom. I wanna take a photo in it. I love it, but most importantly, it feels so good. It gets better with every watch and it's so comfy. Yeah, I've literally slept on them for four years and have not bought another brand since. Yes, I've invested a lot into my bedroom, but it has been the best thing that I've put money into that just helps everything else in life. Like I'm more well rested. I have better dopamine. I'm more productive when I focus on really prioritizing investing in my bedroom. And the best selling Lux satin sheets are the ultimate bedding upgrade. Perfect for elevating your sheet gain. These sheets feature a luxurious 480 thread count and a slightly luminous finish. The online experience is also superb. Shop for your Brooklyn and Sheet Bundle from the comfort of your home. You can mix and match over 20 plus colors and patterns, or just keep the classic white like myself. They're having a sleep week sale with all items 20% off through March 20th. If you rely on Brooklyn and for all your sleep needs like I do, I'd recommend getting the Hardcore Bundle that will save you up to 40% since it will stack the bundle savings with the sale discount. Thank you Brooklyn and for sponsoring this video. Dopamine replenish number four. Music. Now I used to be that person who blasted music before the gym, pumping me up, but I've switched to actually starting off with slow music or even a boring podcast and then slowly built on it. Because what used to happen? I used to get to the gym, hyped up, first two minutes, great, and then I was bored. Versus, you know those workouts? that you don't always wanna do. It takes you so long to get there, so long to warm up, but halfway through you realize this is the best workout of your life. I realized I could mimic that through music. So I start out slow and slowly build. So I'm not like burnt out and bored within the first five minutes. I do have a full music channel with more streams coming soon and my Spotify playlist if you wanna check those out. Number five, the workout itself. Those post-workout endorphins may be my favorite way to replenish my dopamine. A big thing for me with dopamine is just telling myself hard-earned dopamine. 
just like fast food, let's use this as an easy example. I love it. McDonald's, you tell me, where are my Saturdays at 2 a.m.? I'm at McDonald's game, McFlurry and Nuggets, come at me. But no, I shouldn't live off it. Like I should be making my foods with my hands, appreciating the moment, slowing down. And it's just limiting the distance from the action to the reward. So if it takes a lot of work and quite a bit of time to earn that dopamine and earn that reward, it's harder earned dopamine. So like the endorphins of a workout, I gotta go through the whole workout to get those endorphins versus uh, a McFlurry. Great, but it's gonna be pretty instantaneous. And that's why things like cocoa are incredibly addictive because you're literally zero to a hundred. Number six, morning walk and morning sunshine. This all depends on the time of year, but I just try to get sunshine when I can. Sometimes I get it on my commute to the gym. Sometimes it's for my commute from the gym to the office. And sometimes when it's still dark, when I get into the office, I sneak away on a coffee break. From Andrew Huberman, viewing early morning sunlight, 10 to 30 minutes daily, this causes a release of dopamine. And yes, now we all Look at the sun. Thanks, Huberman. Now, we talk a lot about dopamine, but I think there's this misconception of what dopamine actually is. From Harvard Health, dopamine is most notably involved in helping us feel pleasure as part of the brain's reward system. Sex, shopping, smelling cookies, baking in the oven, all these things can trigger a dopamine release or a dopamine rush. This feel-good neurotransmitter is also involved in reinforcement. That's why once we try one of those cookies, we might come back for another one, or two or three or four or five or six. The darker side of dopamine is the intense feeling of reward people feel when they take drugs, such as heroin, cocaine, which can lead to addiction. So really the goal is to do those things that give you the reward, but have the trigger to reward not be so fast and large that it leaves you wanting more and more and more and more, like scrolling TikTok. And now we're at the office. So for my work routine, how do I do things that replenish my dopamine? Number seven, not multitasking. Okay, this is from Huberman. Editing Kelty here. Uh, some of you have pointed out that I need to chill with the Huberman references because it sounds like I joined a cult and you're not wrong the grip he has on the fitness community is kind of insane right now which we love we love Huberman um, but I need to control myself before my whole personality becomes just a girl that listens to Huberman uh, so here is my first step to recovery it just is uh, admitting I have a problem but spotlighting Dopamine interacts with our visual system. From Dr. Emily Belstis, a professor of psychology at NYU. She says how physically focusing your visual attention on a specific point, aka spotlight, will help maintain focus during bouts of goal work. When you focus on a particular point, a medley of neurochemicals, dopamine, veteran, and others are recruited and put you into a state of readiness and clear focus. Number eight, cold exposure. Yeah, we all know. We've seen all the bros doing cold plunges. Guess what? I don't have access to a cold plunge in the middle of the day or nor do I really want to. So when I'm lacking some energy, I just step outside in the cold because I live where it's always cold. Number nine, foods high in tyrosine. I don't purposely do this, but I do eat a chicken sandwich most days and chicken is high in it. So, hey, here's a chicken sandwich. And because dopamine is made from tyrosine, getting more of this amino acid from food could potentially boost dopamine levels to your brain. Some foods high in tyrosine include chicken, other poultry, dairy, such as milk, cheese, and egg, avocado, which I avoid at all costs, bananas, pumpkin seeds, soy, red meat, nuts, or hard fermented cheese. Number 10, blast music on my walk home. Random rewards. Using random reward timing, this is the most powerful schedule for dopamine release and staying motivated. The casinos use this to take people's money. You can use random intermittent reward timing to your advantage. Just stay motivated in any pursuit. The key is to celebrate your wins, but do not celebrate every win. And I've really tried to have that like end to the work day, have a little tie off to avoid burnout, a little reward. And for me, it's blasting music on my walk home. It just is like the sense of shaking the day off or doing a little dance. But also I just try not to mandatory do this every walk home so it does feel like a treat when I do it a couple times a week. Number 12, my night routine. Now those things I talked about in the morning, get home, shower, tidy up for the day, relax, watch a show, and then set up for bed so I actually want to get into it. Sometimes I journal, and by journal I mean I go on my iPad but write some notes, sometimes a book, but honestly, I'm not perfect. For me, as long as I do my skincare, scroll social media, and keep it to maybe 30 minutes, I think that's totally healthy. As I, I love social media. I love seeing what my friends are doing. And guess what? I love movies. Especially when you haven't opened social media for a while. Like there's all those new photos from your friends and funny memes. Like your favorite things are waiting. I for, personally feel the negative side is when you catch yourself just constantly opening TikTok for the 30th time in the last 20 minutes, hoping like something new. The world just blew up and I have to keep tabs on it or this new drama happened. Like I think that's the 
a negative thing. First, it's like you savor it and then have it as like a little fun time. Or the binge cycle of Netflix of just saying next episode, just one more episode. We're just gonna do one more. And, and then I stay up too late and I'm exhausted. And because I'm exhausted, my dopamine is definitely thrown off the next day. And so is the negative cycle. Now, is it actually possible to replenish dopamine? Now the sign says everyone has a baseline level of dopamine and throughout the day it is either released or not released at varying levels. The most important thing to understand is that dopamine is like a propeller. Its main function is to drive our sense of motivation and pursuit. Now how does dopamine actually influence our mood drive? Our dopamine levels fluctuate with peaks when we experience pleasure followed by drops below our baseline, taking time to return. That's why it's harder to get addicted to things that take hard work because simply they're harder to do versus drugs that baseline to peak pleasure is so fast but it can even happen with like running and doing a marathon. Just have that, that like high the high and then that low you experience after it's done the next day. Now, all these things I do in my daily routine. Now, I'm not perfect about them. Some days I do a couple, some days one or two, but they're all things when I did that one year Andrew Huberman video that like I slowly added one thing at a time. Like I did one habit for about 30 days, like looking at the sun in the morning and I just did that for 30 days. I changed nothing and then it became like autopilot. I think I've never been able to build a habit when I have to completely change my entire routine. It only works if I do it for 30 days-ish. It becomes such a habit, it's autopilot, like brushing my teeth, and then I move on and can add other things. And one thing a month doesn't seem like much, but like 12 new healthy habits in your daily routine over a year is crazy. Now the great thing about dopamine is it helps you move towards your goals. It's that sense of motivation towards a reward, but there is a downside to it. Mainly in today where we're like told there's overnight success, you go viral, you have this business and you're worth $500 million and you see these like 21 year old CEO created Venmo people, I don't know, that like are worth $500 million at the age of 21. And like, I used to be like, oh. It hasn't happened to me yet. I think that's actually a curse. What's his name? Dan Bazarian, is that his name? Dan Bazarian? Dan. I heard him on a podcast, I think it was a Skinny Confidential or one of those, and he was talking about, like he was trying to add deprivation in his life because he couldn't really get happy anymore. Like there's no joy. Here's his exact example. You have the best steak in the world. You eat that, oh my God, it tastes so good. And then you have it the next day. And then you know it's no longer a 10 out of 10, it's like a nine out of 10. And then you have it every single day, the best steak on earth, it'll eventually be a seven out of 10. Like you just even out and that's, the reality of dopamine is like it will, your baseline will change. So I think instead of chasing virality, overnight success, I think it's like appreciating the small little wins. And I feel like I feel a lot more balanced when I'm not like, oh, I have to chase a million views, a viral video. I have to be an overnight success. I have to be a millionaire. But instead of like celebrating like, hey, my audience really liked this video or I got a couple seconds faster, even basketball and sports. Like it's very common after someone wins a major sporting event that they're like, oh my God, best day ever, this high is high. And the next day it's kind of this like, oh, what do I do now? Like I did it. And so I think it's not to say don't go towards your goals because you're gonna have this negative thing. I think it's just appreciate the small wins and appreciate like organic, slow, overtime growth versus just that whoop. Cause yeah, virality and quick success can be like a drug. And so that was my dopamine routine. Those are like the 12 things I do that just kind of help me balance or replenish my dopamine. And I feel when I'm doing that, I just have less of that like wanting to endless scroll. Like I feel fulfilled. And whenever you do something that just takes hard work, it, it is so much more fulfilling. And then it replenishes you versus emptying you. So that's why I like things like working out, music, getting outside, low cold exposure, caffeine. Sorry, I'll forever have it first thing in the morning because it brings me such joy. Right now it's very like anti-social media and it definitely, definitely has its downsides. Um, but that's not what this video is about. But I think it's just, learning the balance for it. Like I found, I used to go on social media and just feel so guilty. Like I'm like, oh, this is rotting my brain. Da, 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 da. And suddenly when I was like, maybe just don't scroll it every second, be okay with being bored sometimes and then like savor it. So at the end of the day, I open Instagram and I actually get to see what all my friends did throughout the day and just like stay updated. And it's like a fun little moment versus the endless scroll that is rotting our brains. Comment down below any other things you guys use to kind of like balance it in this state of world where it's just, there's too much going on. I don't know, how, how do we deal with this? I don't know. Have a great day. Go pet a dog. Love you guys. Bye.